There's one thing that I never do is start a project when I have other projects going on. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be working on something. I can't remember what. Shed project got delayed a week, so I have a week of bear time. And another project just slipped right in there real cozy like, so we are going to work on that project. It is new cabinet doors for another customer that I know on all of her cabinets and new drawer faces. And I'm going to be making raised panels, which I have only done a couple times before. So I bought the actual bits to do it because I kind of faked it before. Here's the lumber, 12 foot long, one inch thick, 10 and a half inches wide. These two on the bottom are 11 inches wide. Split it in half and I'll have a five and a quarter inch piece. So I'm gonna do two and a half inch reels and it's gonna be a blast. Finally mounted my whiteboard and I think the only spot that is literally the only spot that's big enough that I can actually reach. Race panel doors. Five, eight, eight and a half, 20. Well, it took me almost an hour just to get the marking done to figure out the best way to cut these things up, and I think I had the best way. I really like this last board. It's got really cool grain. That's going to be awesome. But anyway, I'm going to start cutting now, and um, it's not very exciting, but you can watch anyway. Hermetic seal. I was just cruising along and then I remembered I had a YouTube channel so I should probably film something. I got all this stuff cut and I cut some of it wrong because I cut through panels that were supposed to be full width and I ended up cutting them down to my rail width, which is wrong. I wouldn't have gotten two and a half inches out of it anyway, so it's got to be two and a quarter. Now I'm going to plane all these, all the ones I can plane, and I'm not excited about that because my planer is a rigid 13 inch planer. It's good for making really fine cuts and very precise cuts, but it can't cut a lot of material at once. Notice I'm wearing a t-shirt. It is a lot warmer than it was before. But anyway, I got the router bits from Unico, which is my favorite brand for router bits. Half the price for this particular set is about half the price for a railing style set as it would be from Freud. I didn't even check Woodcraft because they're even more expensive. I've never noticed any difference in quality. I've used Freud and I've used Woodcraft and I've used Unico. Does not make me an expert. I've only used three brands, but this one seems to hold up just as well as the rest of them and they're a lot cheaper. I have no idea what speed to run this at. I cut way better than I had any right to. It looks very clean, very easy. And then we're gonna pull <laughs> the bit and put the other one in after one little tiny cut. That's the wrong <laughs> cut. It's supposed to be up. Yeah. Let's see if the first one that I've ever cut with real bits fits like it should. There, yeah, that's that's super tight, actually. Okay, so the next day we already got one milled up, so now I know I can do it, and I know it's pretty accurate. To figure out how big my panels need to be that's gonna go in here, and how long these rails need to be. Flip it over, and it's not quite right. I was not expecting that one piece to make me so happy, but it does. 29 and a half, 129 seven eighths, and the rest are 23 and three quarters, plus these two doors, which are weird, but that's it. So I want a 14 and a half, so that's a 10 and a half. Wait, so that's, I actually subtracted four inches 
Oh, that's bad, because that means these are exactly the size they should be. Ooh, so basically, I'm just gonna square up the ends. We're done. Does not make me happy, because some of those cuts are not accurate. Basically, I thought these were gonna be wider, so I calculated for a little bit more. I said two inches on both sides, so four inches less, so I made all my boards four inches less. So like this board right here is a 16 for a 19 for a, I guess I made it a little bit big, that's good. That's cool actually, man. I drilled my holes in the wrong spot first. She doesn't want handles in the kitchen on the door, so it's just going to be a curve. It's gonna be hooked back on the back of them like it is now. I can do that on the edges here, because I think I'm gonna do it all the way around just to make it flow, but I don't need to actually. Maybe I won't do anything yet. There are actually four very specific pieces that go together, because these two are three eighths of an inch longer than those ones, and they go with these tiny ones. They all go around this, Supposedly is big enough. Looks like it is. It is big enough, okay. Hey, that actually looks pretty good. I kind of want to get the big bit out and make a test piece. I love it. That is so cool. I love how just clean it is. And is it eight and a half inches wide? Absolutely no reason why I should be wrong. It's eight and three quarters. How on earth? Anyway, I can just cut an eighth inch off the side. Troubling though, because it means my math is wrong. It looks like it's two and a little bit over. No, that's exactly two inches. 15s, so they should be for 19s. Inches. Should be exactly 19 inches. It's 19 and 3 16 What on earth is happening? I guess this tape measure is loose. Let's measure it with something more accurate. 2.09. What does point not, point zero 0.09 of an inch look like? Okay, that's actually pretty big. I was off by that much on all of them. That's, that's bad. Let's cut a uh, 0.9, 0 0.09 of an inch off of all the sides, which isn't really that hard. I can do that, and um, I only need to do the style, so I don't have to do the rails. And this is going to be very, very dusty. Absolutely terrifying to me.
only ones I have done right now. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven out of 18. So we'll only do 11 more after this. That's exciting. A lot of people seem to be very, very scared of glue glottules. Um, like they're too hard or something and they're gonna mess up your planer blades. I don't think that's true, but they are bad because they can change your height drastically and you won't notice it because it's not like the whole board. Okay. Cool trick for cutting wide board square by a radial arm saw. Spacer balls come. It turns out spacer balls only come on slow boats from China, so they would only be here in like five days. Come on, Amazon. So we've made seven door panels. I need 18. These are for 16 inch wide panels. Luckily, they're a little bit narrower than that, and they're actually 16 and a quarter. Plenty of material to work with. Too big to go through my planer, so I'm going to have to plane them separately and then join them together and then fix the joint as well as I can. I'm not very excited about. These have already been joined, so. I feel like I've already showed you way too much information, but this could actually be useful. Watching me figure out how to do this. Can't really believe I wasn't filming, but anyway, I'll show you what I did on the second one. But I wasn't filming, putting it on the sled, getting it leveled out, planing it, or joining the edge. Now you know I did that. And these little screw holes are not really going to be a problem. I didn't even know where they are on the other ones I did. And there's a little bitty hole. They don't go very deep. And I can put that on the back, even if there is a hole. That's pretty flat. So let's do the next one. Picked up eight boards, probably only need like two of them, but it's okay to have extra. We went straight to the end. Eight more 31 inch sections. You already seen this entire process of cutting everything up and chopping down and squaring, planing, joining. You don't really need to see it again, but I will see you when I'm assembling. So goodbye. I will be cutting and making a lot of dust. I got my space balls down here now, so I can actually start assembling. Let's do this one first. Tight bottom one. Do I need two in the end? Just one. Gave them the 3 16 space to be in, approximately, even though they are quarter inch balls, so I don't know how well that's going to work. So I'm going to dry fit this. I'm hopeful 
foolishly hopeful. We'll see. I'm just going to clamp it up. I think it's going to work. And the balls are actually big enough to stay in the tracks, which is cool. We need the A-frame, bottom one here, of course, because I laid it out so well. That's funny. <laughs> oh, I forgot to put my space balls in. I'm going to call them spacer balls, because I like how that sounds better. I didn't put that much glue in there. It's not my fault. If you were doing stain doors, you would have a wet rag, so you could clean that stuff off, and it wouldn't affect your stain. But I'm doing painted doors. Now this piece is cut a little bit, which I'm totally shocked about, that a 16-inch wide piece. That's 9 sixteenths of an inch thick cups. It's just... Utterly shocking to me, but look at that. Still fits like butter. Pretty. I really wish I had those clamps that are clamped all the way back to the bar and they're much thicker and larger. They're four cutting boards and panels like this. Here's a tip I almost guarantee you've never heard before. If you have a glue table like this, and you got glue on it, and you use a really dirty rag to rub it off, wet glue turns brown, and dry glue does not. So you can tell what you need to clean up. So there's one thing I totally forgot to do. Drawer faces. There's an 11 drawer faces I have to make. 17 and a half. Okay, just got through jointing the drawer faces. So they're all nice and flat on one side. So when I plane them, which will be later today, hopefully because my planer blades are coming today. Now they're all flat on one side. Most of these pieces have required me to do that and joint them on one side because they're all twisted and stuff. And I really don't want them to be twisted. The reveal on the top and the sides won't be right. And it's just, you know, I don't want that. This is my first whole kitchen job like this. So I want it to be really, really, really good. And this way, yeah, this way. I don't know if you saw any of that, but this thing's all jammed up with dust on the inside, all these mechanisms, so I cleaned them up, oiled them, which might be a very bad idea, and it might help, I actually don't know. I know grease will hold dust like crazy, but oil maybe not. So I'm putting my dust collection back on. And we're going to make some cuts, but I realize I can't use these, because if I use these, these are an inch thick, they're going to be three quarters of an inch thick, so I don't know if my angles are lined up perfectly, so I might end up making different sizes. And I might end up doing my roundovers first, actually. All right, we're testing this scrap piece that I did made a, I did make a 3 16 roundover on. It's really ugly because the only 3 16 roundover I have are for the shaper. And the shaper is a really rough and tumble tool. All right, uh, 25 degree angle on the right, 20 degree angle on the left, 25 is too much. 20, perfect. Now we can see how gloriously tight these joints are. Now this door is uh, done for the top and bottom. I also want to cut, I think, a 10 degree angle on the sides. Now, come to think of it, these ones could be raised panels, and they would look better as raised panels. I'm going to scrap these, and I'm going to make raised panels. This is a um, practice door face. Look how much better that looks than this. Just that, that bigger roundover looks better, which I was surprised about, actually. And it just looks so much nicer. Honestly, I could end this video right here and it would be a perfectly good video because I've made a bunch of doors, showed you way too much footage of all that milling and planing and all that junk, so I'm going to end the video right here. I have six more doors to do. The door faces are pretty much done, just a little bit of sanding. So now you know exactly how to make raised panel doors. We are going to talk a little bit um, about the, uh, not the science, but the practical side of it. So if you people at the beginning came here to see how to actually make them, Practically, this is where I'm going to show you. Well, I'm not really going to show you, but I'm going to kind of show you. This is a almost completed door. So I'll have to cut the edges. Um, if you're doing handles, obviously super simple. You just drill holes where you want the handles 
make sure it's on the opposite side of the hinges. I'm not gonna show you drilling for hinges and everything. It's going to be French inside hinges, soft clothes, all that beautiful stuff. Um, that will be a separate video maybe. I might film it, I don't know. Not really comfortable filming other people's houses. The beauty of the raised panel door, let me get you. The science behind this, it's a really, really old thing, but it's really, really cool. This panel is thin, so it is weak and it's going to cup, absolutely going to cup. It's going to twist, move around on you. But that's not very nice. If this was just your door, it would be horrible. If it was three quarters of an inch thick and solid, it would also be horrible. The weakness of this is the strength of the door. That's deep right there. Because these frames, there's grain running straight all the way around, they're much less likely to move on you. They aren't really going to move. They're pretty steady. It'll bow a little bit. Nothing's perfect, humidity changes, whatever. But this panel is weak and it will not bow this piece. It'll stay flat because of the strength of this piece and these pieces, it's not going to move. That's amazing. Hundreds of years ago, whenever it was and they did this the first time, it was really, really smart guy. Probably just came out of necessity, honestly. Probably wasn't one person. As far as tips go for actually doing this though, practically, always do these double wide. I saw a lot in a video from Woodworking with Wes. If you want to talk about me on your channel, I'm going to talk about you, so I would like that. Wes, you're a very smart man. Doubling it up for milling makes it safer, makes it stronger. The heavier the wood, the less ginger you're gonna have. Makes a whole lot of sense. Your fingers are further away. If we're cutting the end grain, it's so much better to have almost six inches versus two and a half. Milling the panel, <laughs> there's not really any good way to do it. On these really, really big panels, my planer's not this large. If you don't have a planer, then find somebody that has a really big one because that way you can run them all through and that'd be super nice. If you can find somebody with a wide belt sander so you can run the whole thing through and sand it all flat, that'll save you a ton of time too because sanding all these things flat, you get something a little bit not lined up on the router, it doesn't cut perfect, and then you have these edges and those are an absolute pain to get rid of. This is really, really fun. This is really cool, super easy. I mean, it's like not that difficult. I've never done this before, never, okay? And they look as good as this. It's not amazing, but it's pretty good. No, I don't have too many tips for you because this is my first time, so I don't have not really learned anything myself, but I watch videos, you can watch videos too. I recommend the one from Woodworking with Wes. Super clean, did it in red oak, and look better than mine in poplar. Thank you for watching this video. I should have asked you to subscribe earlier, but you came all this way. I'm very happy that you did. And if you feel like I gave you anything useful in this video, I obviously don't know what I'm doing, but maybe you learned something new anyway. So please subscribe, and my other videos are pretty much like this one, a guy that doesn't know what he's doing, learning things. So if you like watching that, subscribe, like this video, and I will see you in the next one.